After years of work and deliberation, U.S. Interior Secretary Sally Jewell says the greater sage grouse does not warrant placement on the endangered species list. Following a comprehensive effort to conserve sage grouse habitat, Secretary Jewell believes it will be enough for now. Federal and state agencies have worked with conservationists, ranchers, and the energy industry to find a compromise. It does mean a brighter future for one amazing scrappy bird that calls the West home. But more importantly, it means certainty for states, for communities, for ranchers, for developers who want to know where they can develop without compromising the health of the amazing sagebrush landscape. Had the grouse been listed, it would have meant the potential loss of business for ranching and mining operations across the southern half of our state. Even with today's ruling, both land users and conservationists still have their differences. While many hope today's decision would mean the end of the debate, it looks like things are just starting. Jake Melder is live in studio with more. The decision that the sage grouse did not warrant listing was what many area ranchers were hoping for. But it came with a number of caveats, so while they celebrate the progress, they aren't done pushing for change. Users of public lands, such as ranchers and mining operators, are heaving a sigh of relief with the decision that listing the sage grouse is not warranted. Had the bird been considered endangered, many Idaho ranchers would be unable to graze, putting into doubt the viability of the cattle industry in the West. But cowboys are sleeping in their saddle as the decision failed to grant them comprehensive use of public lands. Everything that glitters is not gold. Um, there is also an issuance of land use plans, um, which we feel uh, can be very restrictive. In order to keep the sage grouse unlisted, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service added new standards in how the land is used. 12 million acres of critical habitat will likely prevent future oil or mining operations. Also, infrastructural improvements need a buffer zone between mating grounds. Still, for the conservationists at the Western Watersheds Project, it's not enough. The changes that should be made should be made now instead of down the road. Ken Cole is a critic of cattle operations in the rangeland, arguing the animals help spread invasive grasses. Well, livestock grazing is not classified as a ground disturbance in these plans. It clearly is a ground disturbance. It's the most ubiquitous ground disturbance in these habitats. Analysts believe environmentalists will fight the decision. It was a lawsuit from the groups that started this debate. Idaho ranchers will be there as well, now with more hope of getting heard. I think it shows an indication from the federal government that it to acknowledge that collaboration and that collaboration will work and we can work together to conserve this species. Our congressional delegation has been very outspoken on today's decision. While they approve the not warranted ruling, they believe the land use plans will hamper industry and allow for future lawsuits. Utah Senator Bob Bishop, chair of the Committee on Natural Resources, called the move a, quote, cynical ploy and a de facto listing. Live in studio, Jake Melder, Six on Your Side.